Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sagana Polverino. A warm welcome to all of you, and thank you for joining this webinar dedicated to uh, event apps. So today we're going to see together how to successfully integrate mobile applications into your events marketing operations to improve audience engagement and generate additional revenues for your business. Not only prior to the event or during the event, but especially in the months following the event. As usually, um, there is a an hashtag connected to this webinar and for today's webinar the hashtag is apps for events so if you feel like reaching out to us if you have any special questions uh, uh, that you would like to ask us you can either wait until the end of the webinar where uh, when we will have a Q&A session or you can use this hashtag apps for events on the other side of the screen there is my colleague Chiara and she will be happy to reply to all of your questions via Twitter so before we get us started, let's have a very quick overview to see the topics that we are going to analyze together in today's webinar. So first of all, we're going to see together, we're going to take a look together at the benefits of event apps. So we'll take a look at the event app ecosystem and analyze together the impact that event apps can have on your return on investment. Then of course we're going to have a complete walkthrough to build an application from scratch and I'll walk you around Apps Builder's platform to show you how easy it is to create an application from A to Z. Particularly, we're going to focus on some of the most relevant features of event apps and particularly how to manage in-app bookings to enable attendees to book seats and buy tickets via application just by tapping an icon on their smartphone screen. And then, of course, we're going to see together some app design customization features um, to customize your application and make it mirror your company's look and feel. We're also going to see together how to schedule push notifications, which are one of the most requested features of event applications, uh, which allows you to communicate with your attendees in real time, before, during and after the event. And finally, just like I said a couple of minutes ago, in the final part of this webinar, we're going to host a Q&A session where you can put forward all of your questions and I'll do my best to answer as many of them as possible. You can use the live chat on the right hand side of your screen and if you want you can also use the hashtag for this event, apps for event and get in touch with us via Twitter. Anyway, don't worry because this webinar is being recorded and it will be emailed to each one of you at the end of it. So if you, if you have to leave earlier before the end of the webinar or if you have some extra questions or if you need some extra time to go through some of the features that we can take a look together today, no problem because as of tomorrow morning you will have the chance to go through the recording and um, check everything that we have discussed today. So the rise of mobile technologies such as smartphones and tablets of course has affected every industry and sector on a global scale not to mention of course our daily routine so it's not surprising at all that more and more businesses have decided to invest in a mobile first strategy so from retailers to hospitality businesses we have registered a massive increase in the number of businesses that are integrating mobile in their marketing strategy and of course event business makes no exception so the question that probably you're asking yourself is why are mobile apps so appealing to the event business well, there is no one single answer to this question. There are several reasons and today we're going to take a look at some of these reasons. So first of all, mobile applications allow your event to be, uh, allow your event and your brand to establish itself as an innovation leader. Because unlike most of your competitors, you don't rely on old school marketing strategies and printed resources, but you are an early adopter of the most innovative technologies in your sector. Another reason is that mobile apps allow you to improve networking opportunities for your attendees. So thanks to the social buzz generated by your attendees, you will be able to connect with those people who did not come this time but surely will come next time, so will attend upcoming events. Another great opportunity that is provided by mobile apps for your event is that it allows you to get to know your audience much better than you could ever do. Through the app you can receive real-time feedback on your event. Live messaging, user reports, app surveys are all effective ways of monitoring your event's performance and understand how to improve it. 
Another great benefit is that mobile apps allow you to increase registrations for next year. Because, of course, uh, as a result of the uh, improved, the enhanced event experience offered to your attendees, they will be more motivated to spread word about your event and pre-register for upcoming events. And again, uh, mobile apps are a great opportunity to gain revenues from your sponsors. Your event sponsors are absolutely going to love your application because an app is an amazing opportunity for your sponsor to target advertisements to a segmented audience and deliver marketing messages when the attendees are more likely to pay attention to these messages. And of course, mobile apps are also a great opportunity to create an eco-friendly brand. Because, I mean, uh, these days when people likely are becoming more and more aware of environmental issues, going paperless, paperless is not just an extraordinary opportunity to save costs, but it is also an opportunity to reduce your carbon footprint, so with a positive impact on your brand. And finally, last but not least, of course, Thanks to mobile apps, you can save costs by going paperless. And I guess this is probably the most attractive of all the benefits so far. Because yes, mobile apps mean a tremendous cost reduction. Just think about that. If you are spending 5 to $10 per attendee for programs and handouts, by creating an app for your event, you can save on printing costs. But honestly, it's not just a matter of reducing cutting down on printing costs. Apps can be up updated on the fly and they don't require any physical distribution. So you can also cut on shipping, distribution and last minute updates costs. So in other words, time to hesitate is over and if you haven't done it yet, it's definitely time to create an application for your upcoming events. And that's exactly where Apps Builder, Apps Builder comes in. So Apps Builder is the only one platform to create, manage and promote mobile applications and mobile sites. With Apps Builder, of course, you can create mobile apps for iOS and Android and also mobile sites, what we usually refer to as the HTML5 web app. But we also know that creating um, a mobile app is just the first step to to take to create a solid mobile presence. So that's the reason why we also offer you several promotional tools to increase your application's popularity and also engagement tools to allow you to easily keep in touch with your audience, with your mobile audience and communicate effectively with them um, on the fly. Okay, so let's get started with Apps Builder number one function which is of course uh, creating applications. So this is our home page. I'm sure that you are uh, already quite familiar with it. And there are basically two ways to start creating an application with our platform. If it is the first time, you can just click this big red button that you find on the home page and this will redirect you to the wizard, our guided tour. Otherwise, if you already have an account, just log it in, just log in as I'm doing now. All right, so that's the main dashboard and if you want to start creating an application, just click on this blue button here. So this is the wizard, our guided tour. It is a four-step uh, guided tour that allows you to create a basic structure for your application in just four steps. So the very first thing that you will be asked to provide our um, application is application inf um, information. So first of all, your app's name and I'm going to call my app Sona and I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes. And if you want, you can also provide a website URL if you wish to import some contents from an external website or from a blog, for example. Of course, if this is not the first time that you're using Apps Builder, you can also choose to skip the wizard and go straight to the advanced dashboard. I'm going to move to the next step today because I want to walk you around all the different stages. So here you can choose the features that you want to display inside your application. As you can see, you have uh, plenty of choice here, different modules about news, about uh, social networks, about uh, media such as photos, videos, uh, PDFs, geolocalization features uh, and so on. 
I just want to click a couple of them just to give you an example, but of course you are you will be free to add more modules or remove pages if necessary from the advanced dashboard. So this is the third step. This is the design where we start working on design of the application. Well, uh, once again, as you can see, you have a lot of choice here. Um, you can choose from over 80 ready-made templates for your application. And for each one of them, you will also have different choice, uh, in the choices in terms of menu style. For example, here you can choose among a grid on four columns, a grid on two rows, or this one as a grid on three columns. I'm going to go for something very basic today, for a very simple layout, because I, I want to customize this a little bit with you. So I'm going to pick this one, very basic. And finally, this is just a confirmation page. So to, to tell you that your app's basic structure is ready, and you can uh, access the advanced dashboard to keep on customizing it. Okay, this is a series of tips to introduce you to the different sections of the uh, application, of the, of the dashboard. So if this is the first time that you're um, using Apps Builder, I recommend that you take a look at these tips to get familiar faster with our platform. Alright, so these are the pages that I previously added during the wizard. They're just random pages, so I'm going to delete them. And we can start actually creating our application. So, for today's webinar, I'm going to create an application for Sonar Festival. Uh, I'm sure that you probably, if you are a music lover, you probably have heard a couple of times of this festival. It is the International Festival of Advanced Music and New Media Art. And it was created back in 1994. And nowadays, it has become one of the most important fixtures for electronic music lovers. This year, the festival will take place from the 12th to the 14th of June in Barcelona, in Spain. So I'm going to use this web, this website, their official website, as a point of reference to for my app development, both in terms of design and content, of course. So let's go back to our dashboard. The very first, um, the very first page that I want to create is um, uh, an info section, a general info section, with some information about the story of the event, the venues, and how to get there. So to do this, I'm going to pick a module that is called Places, and that you can find under the general content section on the left-hand side of the screen, where you can see the list of all the different pages that you can add to your app. Places. As you can see, it's extremely easy to add pages to your app. Basically, Either you click on it or you drag and drop the module. OK. And then click on this little icon, Add Content. This is a very special type of page where I can create my very own content manually, so without actually importing it from a URL or a feed, as it can be done for other pages, and we're going to see that later on in this webinar, for example, for news pages, social pages, and so on. You have two options here. If you have already created a manual entry, click on Archive and select the content entry that you wish to import. Otherwise, if you need to create a content entry from scratch, click on Custom and Create. OK, so I'm just going to click on Add New Item here. This is just a little helper to uh, guide you through the different fields that you will find on this page. Okay, so I'm going to call this page About Us. And now I'm going to take some information from the website. Information. As you can see, of course, uh, also on their official website, they do have a section entirely dedicated to general information. And, of course, they do have a uh, a section called What is Sonar? Actually, I'm going to call this What is Sonar to be consistent with the website. Okay, I'm going to take this short description from here. Just copy and paste it in. 
You also have a little editor here if you want to edit a little bit the text, maybe uh, format a little bit. We can add a date and a link if you wish to redirect your app users to an external website where they can find extra information about this page. So as you can see there are quite a lot of information, there's quite a lot of information on this page and also video, so it, it is definitely a good idea to redirect users to this page. And then of course you, you have the chance to type in some details about the location. So let me see if I can get something from here, maybe venues. All right, that's the exact address that I was looking for. So I'm just copy and paste it in. The city is Barcelona and zip code. There you go. Okay, I'm going to type in an email address for reference. I'm going to make it up, but I'm sure, of course, that they do have a general info address and a phone number. Well, they don't seem to have a phone number, so I'll just leave it blank. Okay, then we have this button here, the active inactive button, that is very useful if this content entry is still a draft, and so you need some extra time to go over it later before making it accessible to your uh, app users. Okay, and then we have the geolocalization option, very useful. So basically, as you can understand, you can move the marker over the map to indicate the exact location of your event or, of course, if you have a specific address, just type it in. And this will show the exact location of your event venue on the map. So what does this mean? It means that when your users get closer to this location, they will see this page right on top of the list of all the other pages. So it is a very effective way to deliver the right content at the right time and to the right people. Okay, I'm going to save my changes and then on the right hand side of this panel you can see that you have the chance to upload some thumbnails. We have recently upgraded this feature, so at the moment as you can see, you can upload up to three different photos to create a slideshow effect. Alright, um, for today's webinar, as you can imagine for time reasons, uh, I pr have previously created a folder with all the photos and the icons that I'm going to use in this webinar. But if you want to upload your own photos, it is extremely easy. Just click on this button here, upload your images and add the photos that you want to import. When it comes to icons, uh, you can also choose, you can either choose to upload your own custom icons or you can use our wide range of uh, icon sets for different categories and for different styles. Okay, I'm going to use a, a, general, um, a general image, so I'm going to use the event logo, just one. and save changes. So now if you use the real-time preview that you find on the right hand side of your screen, we can click on what we have just created and test in real time what it looks like. There you go. So we have our um, image, we have our event logo, our contact details to easily locate the premises and a short description about with general information about the history of the event. And there is also this little icon uh, to actually localize the, the, the venues on the map. So if you click on this, I will show you, this will redirect your app users to Google Maps where they can uh, enjoy all the benefits, of course, of Google Maps. So directions uh, and uh, satellite view and so on. 
Alright, let's move on to another page that I think it might be very useful for event apps. And I'm talking about the widget for directions. So, along with a map to locate the concert venue, it might be a good idea to offer a route planner to your concert goers, so that they can use your application not only to find your premises on the map, but also to walk around the city. So I suppose that most of the attendees of these concerts probably are not from Barcelona, so they're probably going to enjoy the holiday as well. So it might be a good idea actually to provide this extra service so that they can keep using the application not only for the, for the gigs, for the concerts uh, and so on, but they can also keep using the application afterwards when the concerts are over to move around the city a little bit. You can find this widget in this section here and it's called uh, directions. There you go. Widgets are special pages because uh, you don't really need to set anything. They are ready-made tools. So if I click on this, you can easily understand how this is going to work. So suppose for, exa for example that uh, I just decided to take a break and to go to the beautiful park well and enjoy maybe some of the Spanish sun there. And I'm in Park Well so at the moment and I need to go back to the concert venue because the evening is kicking in and I, want, I don't want to miss the first concerts of the night. So my starting point is Park Well in Barcelona and my target is the location of Sonar Festival. And there you go. So you have your directions and step-by-step -step instructions on how to get there. Alright, so now Speaking of maps, when organizing an event, it's very important to be easily located by attendees. And that's the reason why I want to create a section where attendees can check the venue location anytime they need and get directions to reach the venue. That's the reason why I want to create, uh, I want to use a map module that you can find under the contact section. There you go, it's called Maps. So just click on Add Content once again. And here you have the list of all the sources from which you can import your, um, your location. I'm going to create a custom one because I want to incorporate in it some um, information about how to get there. So if you see on the website under the information section, they do have a section dedicated to how to get there. Once again, with the map, and all the information to get there by uh, underground, bus, train, bike, bicycle, yeah, taxi, and so on. So the title is how to get there. Now I'm gonna once again I'm gonna copy the link for extra information here. And then I'm going to copy all this very useful information on how to get there in here. Now, when you're working on a map module, on a map feed, don't worry about this section here because this is not the section that you want to use uh, if you want to display information in the application. So you, you have to go for this section here at the bottom. This one is just a short description in case you want to include a title and a subtitle to display on your uh, home page. But for actual information, you have to go for this section here. Okay, let me shorten this a little bit. Okay, and if you want, you can also specify who the author of this is. So I'm going to write my name. And of course, if you want, you can also include a thumbnail. I uh, made a screenshot of the map and save your changes. Oh, well, 
there is one very important thing not to forget about and is the geolocalization option. So once again, let's type in the exact address to be localized on the map. All right, save changes again. Now, so if you click on the map now, you will see the marker exactly indicating the exact location on the map. And if you click on the, mark, you know, on the marker, you will see the information about uh, how to get there. This will take a little time because, uh, okay, there you go, it was faster than I expected actually because this information are processed not only by Apps Builder server but they are processed also by uh, Google Maps. So t sometimes it may take just a couple of minutes when you first create your application, it may take just a couple of minutes to process all the information and synchronize everything. So don't, don't get scared if you create a map module and you don't see anything in the app preview. Try Wait just a couple of minutes and try later and you will see that the problem will be fixed. So there you go, you can see the list of all the uh, in information of the different means of transportation to get there. I think it's very useful this one for, uh, for your event attendees. Okay, there's another page that I think it's quite basic when we're talking about events and it's the ticket page. So I'm sure that your event will certainly have tickets, maybe even more than one type of tickets, so it is important to inform attendees about fees and registrations. So let's create a section dedicated to tickets. I'm going to go to General Content and select a page that is called Text. That is basically just a, a common editor, like the, the type that you find on WordPress if you are familiar with that CMS. So just click on um, Add Content and basically there you go. Here is your editor and I'm just going to copy and paste a couple of information from the website. So there you go. As you can see, they have uh, um, as many as uh, four different types of tickets because actually they have some uh, a pass, of course, a general pass. They have a two-night ticket, ticket. They have a ticket if you want to go to the events just uh, during the day or just during the night. So we'll simply add this information here. Once again, if you want, you can add um, some, you can do a little bit of formatting on the text. But basically, as you can see, I'm just uh, copying in and pasting in some information. Okay, and the last one, Sonar by Night. All right, so I'll save my changes and let's check the preview. There you go. Of course, if you want, you could also add some extra formatting elements or uh, you could add some images, for example, some icons if you do have any or extra links uh, and so on. But this is a very basic uh, page just to provide some uh, relevant information about the different ticket types. Okay, so now, so far, I have created four pages and they are on my app uh, home page. But as a matter of fact, all these pages belong to one main category, that is general information. So I'm going to pick uh, a news module that is just going to work as a general container for all these pages. Right? So I just reorder modules and I'm going to turn these four pages into submenus just by sliding the modules to the right, like I'm doing now. So, what has happened now? On my home page, I just have one single page 
that I'm going to rename general information in a second. And if you click on it, there you go, you have the four pages that you previously created. This will help you keep, of course, the application nice and clean and not to cram it too much with too many pages because you want your application to be easily um, navigated by your app users, of course. They want to help them to access the right information when they most need it. Okay, so let's create the first second page that we are going to display on the home page and this time is about the venues. The reason why I want to create a section dedicated to venues is because uh, uh, if you click on this you will see that they do have uh, a section dedicated to it and the reason why um, I think they did this is because first of all because of course uh, every time that you organize an event you have to provide information about the exact venue but especially even more for this type of festival because as you can see they have two different locations for uh, day activities and night gigs. Right, so I'm going to select a, a module from multimedia that is called photo. Click on add content and custom. The panel is always the same, so once you get familiar with it, it'll, it will be a piece of cake for you to create this type of manual entries. So once again, now the first item that I want to create is a sonar by day. And in the description, I'm just going to put in the exact location. Once again, you can paste it in, the, uh, the, the URL. You can also enable geolocalization option and an image. This time is quite important to have an image, so there you go, that's uh, an image about the, uh, the plan, the venue plan that I took from their website and just save your changes. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with the uh, the venue by night. So this time is going to be called Sonner by night and the location this time is Figa Gran Via. And that's the image. Okay, so I'll just close this and save my changes. And now, if I click on photo, there you go, two entries. So one for the location by day, and if I click on it, of course you can pinch and zoom on the application and you can see the details of this plan, and the same goes for the one at night. I want to show you how to uh, rearrange these pages maybe in a, in a more appealing way because I want, I think that it is useful to display a little uh, title for this here. So I'm going to go to Options Okay, I want to arrange this as a list And there you go, that's exactly what I wanted to do, you see. I want to show you the, uh, the title that I set, so Sonar by Day, and at a glance, at an immediate look, I, at an immediate glance, I can see immediately where the location is, and the same goes for the night venue. Don't worry about this, because we will be able to edit all these elements in a couple of minutes. Okay, let's move on to the next page. So the next page is um, about concerts, because of course this is an international festival of music, so it's time to create a page dedicated to all the DJs and the artists who are going to perform on their stage. So let me see if I can find anything useful. Definitely program. So, fantastic. That's a list of all the artists and the DJs uh, who are going to uh, perform during the festival. So, the idea is to recreate something like this, a list of all the, mm, the, uh, the, the artists, uh, of all the performers, uh, inside your application. 
So I'm going to use a module that is called Events that you can find under the General Content section. There it is. Once again, click on Add Content and Custom. Now remember what we did with the two locations? Well, the idea is to do pretty much something like this. So we should create as many items as all the artists that are going to perform during the festival. Of course, this is going to be a little bit time consuming. So for today, I'm just going to show you how to create one. But you can get the idea. The idea is to create as many as all the artists. Or for example, if you have a different kind of event where you have a list of speakers, uh, a list of speakers. So the list of all the speakers who are going to participate in your event. I'm going to take the, the massive attack as point of reference. Add a new item. I will take the description from here. And of course, this is a um, there is a it is an event, so you can set a start date and uh, and the end of the event. So let me check when they are going to perform. They are going to perform on Saturday the 14th, right? And if you look further into the website, I'm sure that you can find also the exact time when they are going to uh, to to do their concert. So you can set this. So let's say the 14th and suppose that the hour is uh, like 11 p.m. and it's gonna stop on the 14th at midnight. Once again the link if you want to redirect your users to this page for extra information and the event location. So it is a Sonar main stage. Now this is interesting because that's the e-commerce option. If you want you can also enable the purchase of tickets for your event inside each page. So if you want to allow your, um, your app users actually to buy tickets for every single session, for every single concert, you can do this. You can just enable this option. Of course, this is something that you have to uh, consider if it is possible. As far as I know for Sonar, for example, I doubt that it is possible to actually buy tickets for every single concert. You can buy a, a pass a global pass ticket for to access to go to all the concerts. But suppose, for example, that you could actually do this. So I'm going to say that the tickets for this is um, 120 euro. So you can set the currency. You can choose to specify whether these um, this ticket are on discount or not, and you can choose whether you want to manage e-commerce options internally or externally. If you go for externally managed e-commerce options, it means that you will have to provide an external website where you will redirect your app users to to complete checkout procedures. So suppose, for example, that you have uh, a website and on your website you have already configured a shopping cart page. So you don't really want to be bothered with creating everything from scratch with Apps Builder. You just want to redirect your users to your website where they can uh, complete their purchase. Otherwise, you can just opt for internally managed e-commerce option, which means that Apps Builder will take care of everything for, for you. The only thing that you have to do, that you will be asked to do, is to go to the settings section in your dashboard and fill in the e-commerce section with your company details and PayPal account details. Because, of course, we need these details to set up your shopping cart. And finally, a thumbnail. OK, and save your changes. Now let me take a look at this. OK, you can imagine that basically here you will have the list of all the artists, so all the DJs, all the bands that are going to play at the concert. And there you go. 
you have the exact location, the date, the price in case people can buy tickets for single concerts and they can add it to cart or they can proceed to checkout and buy tickets. Okay, now uh, we have created a page for gigs, right? So it's time now to create a, a booking page where attendees can actually book tickets for the event. So to do this, I'm going to select a form and customize it. That's the main panel. You have um, a real-time preview again on the right hand side of the screen so it looks like a panel within the panel where you can edit all the options for your form. Forms are a great thing for mobile apps. You can create forms for any purposes you want. You can create feedback forms if you need to gather users feedback on your products and services or you can create booking forms to enable the booking of services and in this case tickets from the application. The very first thing that I need is to know the name of the person that wants to buy tickets. So, so just click on options and say and write and type in your name. That's all you have to do. That's all the information that we need from you. There you go. Now I need another one to have their uh, maybe their email address. So I'm just gonna write your email maybe it might be useful to have a phone number as well so just move to standard and select number and finally of course we need to know what type of ticket uh, they want to buy so multiple choice select choose your ticket. Now of course uh, this time we need to do a little bit more of work on this module because you have to go to options and you have to set the different tickets that they can actually buy. So I remember that there was uh, a, a global a global pass sonar pass sonar pass then there was a uh, uh, sonar by day, sonar by night, and then there was a two-day ticket. So now if I click on this drop-down menu, I will see the four different types of tickets that I can purchase. And if you click on edit form options, you can also customize a little bit the look and feel of your form. So for example, you can give a title to it, book your tickets, Okay, once again, you can choose whether you want to enable uh, internal or external management. So it means that if you want to connect this form to one of your external database in terms of uh, importing data and saving data, or if you want to do everything using Apps Builder technology. And this is also very interesting, enable notifications. So suppose, for example, that you wish to be uh, to receive an alert, a, non a notification, every time that one of the people actually submit one of these forms. So if you enable notifications, you will receive you will receive a notification to the uh, indicated email address every time that one of the person, uh, one of the, the, the attendees, one of your attendees actually uh, fills in the form and submits it. And then you can also customize a little bit the uh, success message, which is the message that uh, will be displayed to the attendees, to your app users, after submitting the form. So for example, you can say uh, thank you, uh, a member of our staff will get in touch soon for confirmation.
and if you want you can also change the the call to action the text on your button which is something that I strongly recommend actually because it is very important it is a, a good rule to keep in mind to be as explicit as possible when you are um, dealing with buttons so don't just uh, use this standard submit text but try to customize this a little bit and to to be as clear as possible especially when you are dealing with mobile transactions it is very important to try and be uh, as transparent as possible so okay just to recap to your app users what they are actually doing by clicking that button make it clear so state it clearly book your ticket and there you go I just close this and save changes and now if I click on it basically I will see what I previously saw in the other preview so I'm gonna fill it in as an example and I will show you later on where you can access all the information gathered through these forms so I write my email uh, my phone number and I want to buy uh, I want to buy um, a two-day ticket book your ticket and there you go that's my confirmation message so now I know that I will be uh, contacted by one of their staff to confirm actually my purchase okay let's move on to the next page that I want to add to my application and it's a wall chat because at the beginning of the webinar we said that uh, event apps are a great way of maximizing networking opportunities and generate engagement before during and after the event so we can use the wall chat feature to allow attendees to chat in real time with organizers and with other attendees and become an active part of your event to do this all you have to do is just go to um, contact and select the wall chat module which pretty much doesn't really require any uh, any setting it's ready to be used so suppose that I am one of the attendees and I need some um, last-minute confirmation about the massive attacks concert so I'm just gonna jump into the chat and say uh, and ask what time is uh, Mass massive attack okay what time is massive attacks concert now the idea is that of course one of the organizers or maybe simply one of the attendees who's actually walking towards the, uh, the the location of the concert can just reply saying main stage hall one and so on so you can see how easy it is to create this uh, instant messaging system inside your application which definitely adds more value to your application and improves uh, engagement for your attendees all right now speaking of engagement I I'm sure that there is one big page that is missing so far and that it's so typical of every event apps and I'm talking about a social page so events are an amazing opportunity to generate buzz around your company about your around your organization and leverage the power of word-of-mouth summer festival uh, organizers seem to be quite active on social networks as you can see from all these icons that you have here in the footer so they seem to be very interested in this aspect of the event and that's the reason why I want to um, include I want to in, import two communities two social communities the one on Facebook and the other one on Twitter inside the application basically just go to social and select Facebook and Twitter now just click on add content and all you have to do is copy the last bit of the URL which is the 
account name, copy it in, in here. And for Facebook, you can select the type of information that you want to import. So news, gallery or event. I want to import news. And do the same for Twitter. Just copy the account name. And there you go. In just one click, I want to show you what we have done. There you go. We have imported all the stream of updates from Facebook and from Twitter. Now, once again, I don't want these two pages as a single pages on my home page, but I want to do something like I did for the general info section. So, again, I'm going to select a news module, reorder it, and turn these two into submenus. Right? And the very last page that I want to add is a video gallery. Video gallery uh, with all the videos of the best performances of the festival. This is actually a section that you could also add afterwards. Uh, so after the, the end of the, uh, the, the end of the event, when the event has finished, but you still want to use your application to keep in touch with the attendees. And this is a good idea to keep your application alive also after the, the event. Because after all the efforts that you made to create a beautiful application, it would be a shame just to let it die like this and not to keep on uh, using its potential, exploiting its potential. So if you keep refreshing contents and add new resources to your application, you will give your app users more reason to check into it. Not just about the, the event, because of course the event has ended, but because you offer new resources. So video, click on Add Content. And YouTube. We're going to import all the video from their YouTube account. And as you can imagine, the procedure is always the same. So just select this. There you go. The list of all the videos that they have on their channel. And if you click on each one of them, you have the chance to play the video right inside the application. OK, so now that we are done with content, we can start working on the look and feel. And the very first thing that we can do, we can start from, is from these icons here called Options. Here, for example, you can rename pages, and remember this one was a, a general info. Well, we can also change the icon. I have created custom icons for this webinar. So for info, I'm going to use this one. Of course, you could do the same also for the uh, all the, the internal pages, all the submenus. Now, I want to... Well, actually not now because I'm going to change the, the navigation style. So, But if you want, you can also move this uh, title and maybe align it to uh, centered or align it to the left or to the right or have it centered as it is now. But I don't want to be bothered with this right now because I'm going to change totally the layout in a minute. Now, this was um, actually the venue, remember? The two venues, one by day and the other one by night. So. I'm going to call it Venues. OK, I'm going to use this one. Then we have the list of all the concerts. This is called form, but uh, it was the, the booking section. So as you can see, it's, um, it's quite easy. 
and especially once you get familiar with it, it will be even faster and easier. All right, that's the wall chat. I want to leave it as it is, wall chat. I'll just uh, change the icon. As you can see, I'm using custom icons, but if you want to access our icon sets database, just click on this one and you can, you can have hundreds of icons you can choose from. All right, so that's the wall chat. Now, this one is called News, but it was actually the social page. So, follow us. And finally, videos. I'm going to call it videos and the icon. There you go. Okay, so we can now move to the look and feel section where I can further customize the look and feel of my application. The very first thing that you will be asked to provide are the application icon and the splash image. These two elements are compulsory if you want to submit your application to the stores. But apart from stores, I recommend that you uh, upload an app icon and a splash image in any case. Even if you're not going to actually submit your app to the stores and you just want to use it as a, as a web app. Because these elements are, um, of course, they are a reminder of the application's functionality. It is, think about the app icon, for example. It's the icon that your users will always see on the home screen of their smartphone. So it should be the place where your brand and visual impact come together. The splash image is pretty much the same. The splash image is the image that your users will see while waiting for your app to be fully uploaded. So a nice splash image can make their waiting more pleasant and it can improve your application's overall usability. If you need some extra tip on how to, um, how to create appealing app icons and splash image, take a look at our checklist here. And basically here we have gathered eight fundamental recommendations to improve your application. And in each one of them you will find some tips and tricks and also some free resources if you want to expand a little bit more on the subject. So here, for example, you can download an ebook that is entirely dedicated to app icons and splash images. Okay, let me upload my app icon and this and the splash image. Okay, let's move to the home page. As you can see, there are quite a few elements here. I'm just going to go a little bit faster over all these features uh, because I want to show you many other elements uh, and I don't want to uh, bother too long. Uh, okay, so that's the home page. Here we can choose the layout. So the layout at the moment is uh, arranged as a list, but you have many options. You could go for a grid, a grid on two columns, on three, maybe a fixed menu. I think I'm going to go for a grid on two columns. And I also want to add um, a header. Okay, the header basically is uh, an image that is on top, that is displayed on top of your pages. In this case, I just want to upload a header for my home page but you could do the same also for internal pages. And you have the chance to upload a header in two different sizes to be perfectly viewed in the portrait and landscape mode. All right. Now, I want to do something to the title bar as well, which is this title, this bar here on, uh, on which you have the navigation I icons. So just go to the title bar, and here you have two options. So you can either pick a solid color, just click on it and select the color, or you can upload an image, and this is what I want to do today. To create some kind of continuity with the header, so I'm going to select this one.
Okay. And there you go. You notice what I did? So basically, remember that if you opt for an image, remember to uncheck this little box here that is called Disable Image. Otherwise, if you want to go for um, a solid color, just remember to tick this, tick this. There you go. We created this option. You can read more about uh, this option in this little tip, this little helper. We created this option uh, if you want to create some combination, some transparency effect with a combination of solid color and an image. In this case, I really like the final effect because, like I said, it creates some kind of continuity between the, uh, the header and the, the title bar. Okay. Of course, you can do the same. You can customize the look and feel also for other pages. And if you want to create a, a dedicated um, version for tablet, a version that is of your application that is optimized for tablet, which is something that we strongly recommend that you do, um, you can also click on this one here and access our panel. There are quite a lot of, of features in this panel, so if you want to find out more about all the features here and how to optimize your application for tablets, I recommend that you register for uh, our webinar next week. We're going to have a webinar on the 27th of March in the afternoon this time. And uh, in that webinar, I will show you how to use, how to make the most of all these features. We will also have a, a special guest for that webinar and is our user experience designer in-house, Agatha Kopf. And she will be with me and she will assist me in uh, walking you around all the features uh, for tablet optimization. Okay, we can now move to uh, the next sections and unfortunately for time reasons I can show you all the features included in settings and manage users. But don't worry because these features will be covered in upcoming webinars, in other webinars. So for today's webinar I just want to show you how to enable push notifications to communicate with your users uh, even when they're not using your app. So let's go to manage users and there you go so you are probably already familiar with push notifications if you have ever uh, downloaded an application I'm sure that you uh, that you know what a push notification is so push notifications are a great way of keeping your attendees updated on the latest news and last-minute changes about the event especially in the case of event when you have to uh, certainly when you have to communicate some last-minute uh, um, updates to loads of people uh, everywhere it is very important to uh, to use this feature so basically suppose that uh, the massive attack concert uh, has been moved from stage one to stage two So you want to deliver this push notification, you want to send out this push notification in which you say massive attack, be, be careful, massive attack concert now on stage 2 instead of stage 1 to inform all of the attendees to go to stage 2 instead of stage 1. You can also schedule uh, your uh, push notification, so if you already know that in advance you can set the exact day and hour and minute to send out your push notification and you can also filter by device so suppose that you want to reach out just to your um, Android users or iOS users and of course geolocalization options so just click on it and you can select the exact radius in which you want to reach people so suppose that this is um, something related to your event, and so you want to you want to um, you want to reach all the users that are within I don't know like 30 kilometers from your concert venue, for example. You can set the radius, and you can of course insert the address to uh, indicate the exact location. Please remember that push notifications are um, only work for native applications, so apps that have already been published on the Apple App Store or on uh, uh, Google Play. But a feature that is quite similar to push notifications that works on uh, um, 
HTML5 web app, so on a mobile site, is the promotional pop-up. But the difference is that the push notification will reach your attendees even when they're not actually using the app. So it is like a little message, an instant message that they will receive. Uh, on the other hand, promotional pop-up, um, promotional pop-ups will only be uh, seen upon opening, actually launching the application or the website in this case. All right, there is another thing that I want to show you in this section, and there's the form analytics. Remember that we created a form to allow to enable in-app bookings, and I filled in the form with uh, my uh, details. So this is the section, that's the database where all the bookings are gathered and collected. So here you can access all the, um, the information about the attendees who want to purchase tickets and you can easily get in touch with them and confirm their order or even do some upselling. Okay, now let's jump to the promote section. Every time that you switch to promote section you will be asked to confirm updates because this means that all the, um, all the cha changes applied to your application will be pushed straight to your uh, final users and so to your app available on the stores. This is very useful because it means that you won't have actually to resubmit your application to the stores every time that you apply some changes to it. So that's the promotion section because like I said um, in the beginning of the webinar, uh, Apps Builder is very much uh, interested in offering you promotional tools to spread word about your app and to drive more traffic to it. So one of the, um, the most unique features provided by Apps Builder in terms of promotion is the app landing page. And today I want to show you how to create one. So as you can see on the right hand side of the screen you have a preview of the landing page. We already have an app icon and a title, so we can add a subtitle. Okay, the official app of Sonar Music Festival. You can also include a short description about the festival. You can choose if you want to display a white iPhone or a black iPhone or if you want to display a combination of the two devices in case you have created a, um, an optimized version of a tablet. And of course the app preview image. Alright, this is a, I'm going to use the splash image. Let me see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm just going to go um, use the splash image, but actually you could also show, just take a screenshot of the, the home page and so show what a home page looks like, just to give an idea to your final users of what it looks like, or what they can expect when they download this type of application. And now let's move on to the features. So here, just like for the application, here you can choose the list of all the features that you want to display about your application. But first you have to pick the category to which your app belongs. So in our case I'd say that it's definitely music and arts. And I'm going to select all the features about this section. As you can see for each one of these features we have already provided you with um, a default description uh, that will be soon um, editable. So you will have the chance to actually uh, customize the, this little text and type in your own text for more detailed information. Alright, the very last step is the look and feel. So you can choose if you want to align the device on the right hand side or on the left hand side. We can change the top background color, you can go for a solid color or for an image, one of our default images or upload your own. Okay, uh, let me try with this one. and how you want to arrange your features on one column, two columns or three columns.
Okay, so now that the uh, Appland page is ready, you can take a look at this by clicking in on the button Preview in Browser. So, you soon realize what an Appland page basically is. It's a standalone web page that is used to advertise your application and showcase its main features to potential users. So, it's like a mini website that is entirely dedicated to your application. And once the uh, landing page is ready, you can email it to your uh, all of your friends. Maybe you can include the link into one of your next newsletters to reach uh, all of your database. You can connect it to your website. You can promote this on social pages. And you can even link it to dedicated marketing campaigns to drive more traffic to this page and encourage downloads. As you can see, you have all the major icons for social sharing and at the moment you only have one icon to launch the web app because of course we haven't published the app on the stores. But if you do publish the app on the Apple App Store and Google Play, you will see the two icons for the two stores where users can uh, download the application. Alright, the very last thing before we end this webinar is um, always remember to update your app at the end of each session at work. And remember to test your application on a real device. So we recommend that you preview the app on a real device uh, before actually start promoting the application or submitting it to the stores. Because, of course, you want to make sure that everything looks fine and everything works properly. So in, all you have to do, click on Preview App and select the device on which you want to test the app. I have an Android device, so I'll click on Android and follow the instructions. Basically, download from Google Play to download Apps Builder demo app and log in using your username and password. And then you will have the chance to test the app right on your device. Okay, so that was it. We, uh, we created some a basic structure for our app in a little bit more than an hour. But, um, of course, over time you can add extra pages, you can refine the layout, you can refresh your content, and so on. Now, if you have any questions about some of the tasks that we, we've seen together in this webinar, it's your moment, so use the live chats that you find on the right-hand side of the screen, and feel free to ask me any questions that you want. Okay, I don't see any uh, any special questions, so I suppose that everything was uh, was pretty clear. I'm glad about that. So I just want to leave you with uh, uh, with um, some tips about our resource center. Okay, so we have um, we have recently launched our resource center where you can find the list of all the resources uh, produced by apps builders. So you can find ebooks, infographics, uh, and case studies uh, about uh, apps builder, about uh, the mobile industry. So if you want to be updated on the latest trends uh, in uh, in this sector, I recommend that you take a look at this resource center and you take a look at uh, some of our infographics and ebooks. If you want to find out more about our upcoming webinars, take a look look at this section where you can find a list of all the upcoming webinars. This one here, for example, is the one that I mentioned uh, beforehand during the webinar. So if you want to find out more about that panel dedicated to um, tablet layout, register for this webinar on the 27th of March and together with uh, our graphic designer Agata, we will see all the features to actually improve your user experience. And, of course, if you haven't got the time to attend live to our webinars, you can just take a look at our recorded webinars here on the, on the right. And you can take a look at all the webinars that we held in the past. All right, so I just want to leave you with a couple of contact details if you uh, 
maybe if you decide to get in touch with us afterwards. So keep using the hashtag for today's webinar, App for Events, and feel free to tweet us anytime you want on um, Apps Builder Twitter profile page. If you need specific support on a technical issue, take a look at our support forum uh, or maybe our official blog, blog.appsbuilder.com, where you can find uh, many tutorials, but also many articles about the mobile industry in general and the latest trends. Finally, uh, we're always very happy to hear from you. So in case you uh, need some support or in case you want to share with us some feedback, just drop us an email at support at appsbuilder.com and take a look at our YouTube channel where you can find plenty of webinars, other webinars, tutorials, and as of tomorrow, you will also find a recording of this webinar, today's webinar. All right, thank you very much for your time today. I hope that you enjoyed this webinar and I really hope to see you at our upcoming webinars. Bye-bye, take care.